Welcome to my new series called ZomCon, which stands for Zombies Conference, where essentially I'm going to put out a post every time we do one of these episodes, ask you guys what you think about a certain COD Zombies thing, and then I just go through and read a bunch of your comments and reply to them. I thought this would be a cool way for me to interact with the community more, and we've, all, we've got 71 comments on the first episode, so holy shit. But without further ado, here we go. So this week's episode is, what is your favorite zombies map and why? Off the bat, we've got the top comment here from Skippy Skippers says, coming back to it years later after its release, I unironically love Die Rise. Okay, okay, I'm gonna have to stop you. No, I'm kidding. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions, you know. I may not like Die Rise myself, but A, let's see what he has to say, you know. I know incredibly player unfriendly and there's a lot of frustration around deaths beyond your control. Very true. But there's something about the style of the map and how it flows. The upside down building is the best example. There's nothing else like Die Rise. I mean, regards to that, he's kind of right, you know? Die Rise is very unique. I'm excited for when, you know, Lex does this Die Rise remastered custom map on Black Ops 3, but I can definitely say Die Rise is unique. You know, it's the same thing as Transit, where I don't hate Transit because Transit, like, it had a lot of potential. It was just way too ahead of its time, you know, console limitations and stuff. But yeah, you know, I can agree with that. Let's see what the replies were. I wouldn't quite put it as my favorite, but Die Rise is great IMO. Mastering Die Rise was worth it, yeah. See, like, mastering Die Rise, this is another concept of maps. No matter how bad a map is, if you play it enough and you know the ins and outs, then it automatically becomes a bit better. You know, like how Blood of the Dead, I know it's considered one of the hardest maps of all time on um, Black Ops 4 and in Zombies in general, but there's so much you can do on that map. Yeah, moving into the next comment, uh, Eric Copeland says, Mob of the Dead, of course, the classic. I, I knew we were going to get some Mob of the Deads. Storyline, characters, atmosphere, map exclusive weapons, afterlife system, challenging map layout, so fun on high rounds. In fact, today I made it to round 50. Hey, congrats, dude. And also upgraded the Hell's Retriever to the Hell's Redeemer for my first time. So much fun. Hey, respect. Round 50 to say you've only upgraded the Hell's Retriever for the first time. That's pretty impressive, honestly. Now, here's where I'm going to be slightly controversial. Honestly, I find Mob of the Dead high rounds kind of boring. Like, I, uh, the strat is literally to run around the acid trap because the acid gat stops one-shotting basically around there. You can't really use it anymore. And the only thing that's going to permanently kill is the Hell's Redeemer, which only kills six zombies at a time. But outside of that, everything else that Eric says here, I completely agree. The storyline characters in the atmosphere, the map exclusive weapons, the afterlife system, every single one of those, the whole aesthetic of Mob of the Dead is just a masterpiece. It's definitely in my top five favorite maps of all time, probably top three. The intro cutscene, oh my god, can you get any more iconic than that, really? But yeah, thank you very much for the comment. On to the next one. Brady Woods says, my personal favorite is easily DE, Derise and Drake. Hell fucking yes. This is my personal favorite as well, mainly because like during Black Ops 3's life cycle, when DE came out, it was the peak of zombies, really. I played the hell out of it with my cousins when it first came out, and to this day is the map I always come back to all these years later. You and me both, man. Great story and characters, amazing easter egg that can be done solo, and go to DE song. The memories I made on DE won't be replaced. Very true, very true. I mean, the whole boss fight of Derizendrak was just awesome. The storyline, the whole like Dempsey, you know, having to off his other self. It really humanized the characters, like the main characters, which I really appreciated because, you know, in previous games, Richtofen, for example, was just a psychotic, crazy character, but they actually made him more human. Like he clearly shows remorse for Dempsey when he has to like, you know, end Dempsey. But yeah, very true. I absolutely love DE. The bows, you know, they definitely weren't a copy of the Origin stats. They were completely unique. And aesthetically, they were gorgeous as well. Like the fire bow, the wolf bow, just such bright and vibrant colors. The Easter egg quests as well were really nice. It's sort of like a nice middle ground because it's not as difficult as Origins, I'd say, mainly because it's on the Black Ops 3 system. You know, the early rounds on Origins are always the hardest and having to deal with the two hit system is mainly the issue with that. But obviously on DE, you know, they blended elements with Mob of the Dead because of the dragon heads being like the hellhounds. Overall, it was just a bit of a masterpiece. Shields Bouchard, I've totally butchered that name, I'm very sorry, but the Rucked is by far my favorite due to the amazing horror atmosphere it has and just how generally challenging it is. I can respect that. I think the Rucked is a little bit too bare bones for me to like put it as my absolute favorite map, but I 100% agree. It's definitely the scariest map so far. The sprinters are just terrifying, even when I go back and play it, you know, I want to go back and play World of War the Rook because it's just, it's gritty. It just, it feels great to play. And it was definitely a challenging map. You know, the whole splitting you off in two different 
spawns, like Jug and Quick Revive being on complete opposite sides. You have to go all the way around the map to get to them. I quite liked that, you know, it was challenging. What a fuck? <laughs> nice name. It says Doris because it's the map I mastered the most. It's small but with wide spaces to turn around groups of zombies. Very true. Doris was the first map, obviously, that introduced Pack a Punch, and that really allowed the flow of zombies to kind of take form for once because you have a lot more to play for. Games would typically go on a little bit longer. I mean, you know, you've got Shino Numa around a billion or whatever but back then when world of war released i'm pretty sure people weren't doing that but yeah lots of places to train it's not a huge map everything sort of flows into itself like you've got the three different branches where all the teleporters are but it all links back to the middle where pack a punch is which i really like that whole layout of the map because it's very friendly for new players but it does certainly get a little bit old after a while you know that's why we need the crazy ridiculous sized maps like transit and stuff obviously transit didn't do it go too well but like you gotta spice things up you know the slow revive says i might get crucified for this but my personal favorite is zetsubo no shima hey i was hoping we'd get a zetsubo comment i love the atmosphere the wonder weapon is fun and not too difficult to get i love the spider mini boss as well but i'm no johnny j25 true true i do understand why people don't like it as much as i do the thrashes are just dumb either lower the spawn rate or give a reward for killing them and the final boss is a bit lackluster but for me personally I love the map despite its flaws. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I can agree with everything this person said. I really like Zetsubo. I mean, my favorite wonder weapon of all time is the Skull of Nan Sapwa. Speaking of which, I've got some merch coming. I'm just finalizing and making sure that the uh, the merch is actually like good enough quality to put out. But expect to see that in the next week or so, but on screen, this is what the design looks like. I mean, how goddamn sick does this look? So I'm excited to put up my merch store, you know, finally you guys can have some FPS Psycho merch if you would like to. I'll of course make a post and probably say in a YouTube video when it's actually live. But yeah, the skull is my favorite wonder weapon ever. The atmosphere of Zetsubo is really cool. Like, you know, it's not super scary, but it's definitely one of the scarier maps. The KT4 is honestly just like a, a better Sliquifier. I know the Sliquifier pre-patch is probably better, obviously. You know, it's fucking one shot and it kills an entire round, but the mini boss, the spider mini boss i gotta say i really appreciate having a boss like mid game i wish we'd have more of those like it was just part of the upgrade quest for the kt4 but you just have a whole boss fight like i know it wasn't difficult or anything but it's just the thought that counts you know it was aesthetically very very cool and yeah like i said the final boss kind of it was a little bit easy but Still, the cutscene makes it very rewarding. And what they say about the thrashers, I can totally agree with that. Because, yeah, the thrashers kind of uh, spawn way too damn fast. Way too much. They look cool, but, yeah, they were just annoying. And they kind of just spam them in the boss fight. Like, they spawn so many of them in. Which, I mean, I understand why. Because it's got to be difficult, but it doesn't exactly make it too hard. It just makes it obnoxious. Like, getting casually one-shot when you have Jug because of the fucking thrasher hitting you is a bit annoying. Gun Game Guy 11. My god, that's a fucking tongue twister because i've commented this on one of your posts before but revelations for me it's not too stressful easy to high round and it's just generally fun i can get behind that you know revelations i was not a fan of the easter egg because like finding random rocks outside the map really not a fan of that the two boss fights again you know using two different bosses i appreciated that even though it was literally just the shadows of evil shadow man boss fight repeated again i, I wish they kind of like put a spin on it and made it a bit more unique but the high rounds yeah it's like the single easiest out of any cod zombies which is a good thing because it gets people into the high round scene you know you've got to have an entry level map and i feel like revelations is definitely the one for people who want to go for high rounds i've definitely hit 100 like at least five times i think now and i've not really been a huge high rounder over the years so yeah overall you know the thunder gun the apothecary servant there's a lot of fun to be had on revelations so i could definitely agree with what they're saying gons says five funnily enough is in my top three wow interesting gameplay doesn't get old and it proves a good challenge and wish they kept the thunder gun in it though true apparently the thunder gun was supposed to be in five but they ended up putting it in kino instead i think it would have been way better on five considering the map is already hard as it is if they give an easy to use wonder weapon it would like bridge that gap between difficulty and kino was always going to be easy like if you have the the fucking winter's howl on that map for example then it would kind of make a little bit more sense but then again getting to like round 100 on kino because that was one of the first maps people ever got round 100 on i think it wouldn't have been possible necessarily or it wouldn't have been as easy that's for sure so yeah i can agree with five like you know the whole like jfk richard nixon the cast of and crew of five is just amazing I kind of prefer Classified to 5. I know people will crucify me for that. But gameplay-wise, I just think it flows a bit better. It's a bit more fun. There's a bit more to do. 
The Winter's Howl is actually good in that map as well, but I totally agree with the fact that the crew is better on five and also the Pentagon Thief should have been unclassified. 100% should have been like a final boss instead of the whole bullshit round 150 thing where you have to complete the Easter egg, you know? Evan Svensley says, assuming it's from non-Treyarch games too, I'm going with a very unpopular opinion and say that either Zombies in Spaceland or Raven the Redwoods are my favorite. Respect to you, my friend, respect because Zombies in Spaceland, definitely in my top three. 100%, I absolutely adore Zombies in Spaceland. Only Treyarch, I would say DE, maybe SOE, if the Easter egg could be done solo. Also true, that's something we didn't talk about, is the fact that Shadows of Evil, you can't do the Easter egg solo. Why, man? You can literally get up to the last step. They couldn't have slightly reworked the last step to make it so that you could do it on solo. Like, bro, come on. Is it really that difficult to just have it like, oh, go up to one of the trains and it counts for all four or something like, bro. But Zombies in Spaceland and Raven the Redwoods, who of the best, if not the best, non-Treyarch Zombies maps and are definitely up there above like a lot of actual Treyarch maps. I'd put both of them above probably every single Cold War map. I think the best non-Treyarch Zombies games are the ones where the devs try and think outside the box a bit more. Like, I know people don't like Exo Zombies, for example, but you've got to give credit where credit is due. The later two maps, like the whole, you have teleport grenades, you have like force push from Star Wars that you can use on the zombies, drops that literally make it so the zombies explode if they touch you. So many fun, cool features. I think that the devs just need to go back to that way of thinking. Because yeah, in Infinite Warfare Zombies, it was the prime example, you know, Lee Ross, shout out to you, my man, because you made a fucking amazing experience. I know Shaolin, Attack of the Radioactive Thing, and oh good God, the last map, Beast from Beyond, my least favorite map of all time. Uh, Yeah, there were definitely some hit or misses, but aesthetically, a lot of the maps are really, really cool. And Zombies in Space Land, the Raven, the Redwoods, you know. If you haven't played those maps, I highly suggest getting Infinite Warfare and trying them. You know, when it's on sale because, oh, Activision, we're going to keep games on full price fucking seven years later. And then Hellguard replied saying Spaceland is literally the most popular non-Treyarch map. Very true. Spaceland is always the GOAT, but don't sleep on Rave. Rave is actually a really enjoyable map. You know, it's got crossbows instead of bows, kind of like the Rizendrak. It bows instead of staffs. The upgrade quests are pretty cool. I'll definitely revisit both these maps in the near future. Mal says, either Origins or Mob of the Dead, both great for players who like challenges. Very true. The two iconic horsemen of Black Ops 2 zombies. They have a lot of replay value. I'd say Origins is leaning more towards the people who like challenges because Mob is like, it's still difficult per se if you're not super experienced, but once you've gone around the map once or twice, you kind of know how Mob of the Dead works. I mean, the Easter egg is literally just going to the Pack-a-Punch room like three times and doing some very small changes each time so but both are absolutely amazing and it really helps players to increase their skill level because if we had maps that were just like Kino de Toten over and over and over and over again all the way until like you know 2020 there would really be no like substance to zombies the easter eggs and the challenges in general you know like the reverse rainbow perk challenge was introduced on origins i believe things like that it really just spices up the gameplay rack jeroki i'm totally just fucking brutally obliterating these names. Darice, because it's simple, it offers great pap weapons, awesome map design and great atmosphere. Similar to what the other person said about Darice, I totally agree with this. Darice was like the first map that technically introduced an Easter egg, you know, the whole Samantha's Easter egg thing that I'm totally blanking on the name. Samantha says, I guess is what it's called. That added a whole new dynamic to zombies in the future. And yeah, Darice is uh, absolutely iconic. No wonder they brought it back as the giant in Black Ops 3. Zombie, wait, what the fuck? Zombie says, my favorite has always been key you know, De Toten, uh, of course. It was the first map I ever played and the first map I ever made it to a higher round on. I always enjoyed playing it with my brother and my dad. Total respect to that, you know? I would probably have more love for Kino if I didn't get so bored of it playing now, but back in the day, you know, it was creepy as hell to play. It's like the go-to iconic map. I don't say it's my favorite, but I do appreciate it for what it's done for the community, you know, for, for zombies in general. Kino is probably one of the first maps people are going to think of when you hear Call of Duty Zombies. And that whole nostalgia factor really does play into the love of zombies itself, you know? Metal Gear Zeke says, My most underrated map is Nuketown Zombies! Finally, I was hoping someone would say this. I like Nuketown map from multiplayer and instantly like the zombies version. Challenging map, random perks and pap. M27, perfect way to practice train zombies on tight space. Also chaotic fun when playing co-op. I don't understand why so many players and YouTubers hate this map. Me neither, man! Me neither! I don't know why people hate this map so much. Nuketown is a survival bonus experience. It is not an 
official zombies map to be like used as a DLC. It was a bonus for getting the season pass, I believe, on Black Ops 2. And it is an extremely fun map. Nuketown and town survival maps were the reason that I got better at zombies. I just continuously played them, you know, got a feel for, like they said, practice train zombies on tight spaces. The M27 is one of my favorite guns ever. And the fact it was only on Nuketown is kind of strange, but like it gives me a reason to want to play it, you know? The random perk system and the pack a punch I understand there's a bit of controversy behind that because you could get all the way to round 20 and not have Jug or Packet Punch. You'd have one, but not the other. And like, I can understand that, but it's never been done before in Zombies and it still hasn't been to this day. It's a very unique way of playing the game. And sure, maybe you can't play it back to back over and over again, but I appreciated that it was a fresh like idea. It was a whole different dynamic to Zombies and the fact that it's set like what, 10 years before the events of Transit happening during the moon Easter egg. And then you see the zombie turn to blue eyes while you get to like round 25. Like that's such a cool little thing. Something as small as that really adds to the love and like the depth of the map. So I, a lot of respect for the Nuketown zombies enjoy. You know, I love the map as well myself. Most of my like popular videos have actually been Nuketown zombies. My first proper commentary was on Nuketown zombies. But yeah, total respect. Next comment, Fitzy244 says, Very, very unpopular opinion, but Alpha Omega. Oh my god, speaking of Nuketown. I met my best friend playing that map. I moved closer to him because of our bond. That map is actual fun to do the Easter egg on too. You know, I can understand this because, you know, obviously they have a connection with this map. I'm not here to judge anyone for their favorite maps or anything. I don't personally like Alpha Omega. I mean, my first ever attempt on that map, I got round 100 sitting still with a ballistic knife like bruh but they met their best friend and they also said that the easter egg is kind of fun to do and i from what i've seen it actually does look kind of interesting the easter egg but playing the map itself i think generally it looks a little bit annoying to deal with some of the features it's kind of similar to like infection from exo zombies not as extreme don't get me wrong i mean it has elemental raygun mark twos which is so cool but apparently all the variants are kind of mediocre and the regular one is just better which I noticed that a lot in both Cold War and Black Ops 4 Zombies is the base versions of elemental weapons always tends to be like the best one. Like in Mauer the Totem, the best version of the Cerberus is just the standard Cerberus. But yeah, I can get behind Alpha Omega, you know, the, bringing back the Avogadro was kind of cool. And the fact you play as the Ultimus and the Primus crews at the same time, like you can pick out any of the eight characters when you load into the map. That's pretty unique, you know, I could appreciate that. And you finally get to go under the bunker in Nuketown, like people were theorizing that for ages way before Black Ops 4 were even released, you know, from Black Ops 2 all the way to Black Ops 4. You have a next comment, Cats137. The Rucked had such a great atmosphere and challenge to it. It's a classic and easy to pick up, but also makes you feel like the zombies got you surrounded and sooner than before you will be killed. Highly underrated and it should get more love. I totally agree. You know, we had the Verrucked comment earlier on. Cannot dispute that, my friend. Grover Cleveland says, Carrier was the bomb back in the day. If you know, you know. I can agree. Like I was saying earlier about teleport grenades and that drop that makes you like the zombies just explode if you touch them. Carrier was the third map on Exo Zombies and it was definitely like one of the best of the four. Carrier and then Descent, like the Exo Zombies maps got so much better as they went on. Not including Infection. Infection was a big step backwards, but they were trying unique ideas and then they finally got their stride when they got to Carrier. And it definitely paid off. You know, you got like the Limbo gun. And then the very next comment from Logan Miller says, I believe it's called Descent. The final zombies map in AW Exo Zombies. First map underwater. The teleport grenades, which, hey, my man, we're on the same wavelength, bro. And I think there's a new drop in there and the force boss fight with Oz. Yeah, having an actual, like, a boss fight that happens just while you're playing is pretty damn cool. It was, like, almost mandatory. So, sure, if you're not a very amazing player, you're going to get rolled by him by the time it reaches, like, round 25. But, yeah, every single feature, it was the very first map ever to be underwater. And I think it's the only map, right? I don't think, like, other than Zetsubo, where you have features of the map that are underwater, but the whole thing isn't underwater. All of Descent, pretty much, except for the spawn, is under the, under the ground. So I have a lot of respect for Descent. You know, I, I enjoyed that map a lot. Exo Zombies was actually the reason that I got better at the game. Comboed with like playing Town on Black Ops 2 and also Nuke Town. It was very fast paced. It was definitely like different to Treyarch Zombies. That's where I think Exo Zombies needs a bit more love because it gets treated as if it's Treyarch Zombies. No, it's meant to be a different experience. It's way faster paced. I'd say it's definitely more difficult as well because I mean the Pack-a-Punch system, you know, 
It's a bit of an L, but at the same time, it means that the game is harder. Like, you don't just instantly get a gun that can shred zombies to round 20, 30. Like, you have to keep packet punching, and it's a good way to keep getting your ammo back. So it's not like you're fighting and just totally worrying about your ammo consumption the entire game, because there's 20 marks that you can go through on the packet punch. Each time it gives you more ammo, so like, it wasn't really an issue. Ben McCann says, Town Survival or Darice. I just like the basic maps, and congrats on 14k subs, thank you very much. Crazy how we're almost at fucking 15k, I mean, look at this shit. I'm gonna refresh this, and look, we're 14,902, we're close to 15k, man. By the time this video goes up, we'll probably have hit it, which is just insane. But yeah, Town and Darice. I think that Zombies needs to bring back survival maps. Like, Transit was a bit of an L, don't get me wrong, but survival maps were the best part of that release, honestly. Like, Town is probably the most played map on the entirety of Black Ops 2. And I know, that sounds crazy considering Origins and Mob of the Dead, but if you think about it, the map was free with the game, you don't have to buy the DLCs for it. You have a Pack-a-Punch and all the core perks in one area, a mystery box in only one of two spawns, some pretty solid training spots, and it allows you to go through basically every gun in the map and just pack a punch them and see what it does and see how it like flows and how it plays. Whereas on Origins, you know, a lot of casual players are not going to play Origins more than once. They'll play it once and be like, damn, this is fucking difficult because once the Panzer spawns in, you're on a timer. Once it hits round eight, you know, you have to deal with him. And a lot of new players will just get completely shit on by him. So they go back to something like Town, where they can keep replaying and get better at the game. This is coming from Gustavo Fring himself, Daniel Dorton. His favorite map is Darice, another Darice enjoyer. Wow, we've got a lot of Darices here. Such a nostalgic map, which introduced Pack-a-Punch Machine and the Teleporters and the Bowie Knife. I totally forgot the Bowie Knife got introduced in Darice. Very true. Adds a little bit of a dynamic if you get enough points early on, you know, you can maximize even more points. It was a fun blast playing with my friends on Xbox Live on that map. Also, the Easter eggs on that map was wild for the time. True. The whole Samantha thing was like really like creepy, honestly. Just this weird demonic voice out of nowhere. And it's quite obscure to find, like without YouTube and tutorials and shit back then. Next comment from the Time Bomb. It says Derizon Drak is mine because the one weapons are easily accessible, making a wonderful replayability. The Easter egg is easy but very fun to do. With an incredible boss fight and the ending cutscene was very good. Completely agree with everything you just said. I'd say the bows aren't like super hard to get, but they're not easy. Same for the Easter egg, but like they're more accessible than the origin staffs, for example. Like it's definitely one of the best maps in terms of it appeals to everybody. Like if you're a hardcore fan, you can still enjoy the Rise and Drock. It's not so easy that like, there's nothing for you to do. Oh, speaking of uh, better call Saul characters. Oh my God. Saul Goodman from Saul is Funny says, Origin since the Easter egg, I love doing it to the point I memorized the steps. Then I did it with my friends over and over. It was something I was known for. Origins is the staple like challenge map. Hell, I did a video on Origins cause and effect the other day. That was a lot of fun. Like Origins, you can always come back can just do different things even outside of custom zombies you know there's so much you can do on that map i'd say it's probably one of if not like the go-to favorite map for a lot of people in terms of aesthetic from the goblins it says shaolin shuffle is their number one new york in zombies looks so good two derizon drak the snowy mountains are breathtaking and three blood of the dead amazing hellish atmosphere this is interesting because they're saying it's their favorite map in terms of aesthetic, which I can get behind all three, honestly. Like Shaolin Shuffle is a pretty beautiful map. Sure, I wouldn't say it plays better or it's a better map than a lot of other choices personally, but in terms of aesthetic and how it looks and the designs of like the weapons and the other features in the map, yeah, I can I can agree. Same for Horizon, you know, Hohenwerfer Castle, like it just, oh my God, the snow and everything, the medieval vibe, it's all awesome. And then Blood of the Dead, the whole like hell, like doom aesthetic of, we just did an endless cycle of death. I need to play Blood of the Dead more, honestly. <laughs> my God, we have so many comments to get through, but Tabola Mass says, Mob of the Dead, so many memories as a child and just a solid map. Yeah, Mob is just like very iconic. It's probably, I think it was like one of the first maps I ever saw gameplay of. Especially the cutscene. I remember when I was younger, I used to like reenact the cutscene as a kid with a bunch of my friends and like, I don't know, I was like 10 years old at the time or some shit. It was fun. It was great. Sean Wade, Spyro Joker P5. My God, got a lot of names there, bro. Because my biased favorite map is Garod Krovi. I love dragons, but I try to say all maps are good. Just some are better in their own way. Agreed. I like the way you think because yeah, 
there's no definitive like single best map. There's a general consensus, like most people will say probably Origins, Mob of the Dead, Doris, or like Kino the Totem. Like for obvious reasons, they'll say like maybe Kino because nostalgia, maybe Origins because they're like challenges and high rounds, maybe Mob because they're like Easter eggs. But this person liked Garod Crowley because they love dragons, you know? I, I can't dispute that at all. I also love dragons and Garod, bringing back the PPSH, you know, the map is beloved. Every single BO3 map was just a hit, one after the other, it was great. This person says Mob of the Dead because it's really fun to play. It's, I'd say, mid-difficulty, agreed. The vibe and design of the map are amazing. Also, the design of the zombies having barbed wire around them. I totally agree with this point, no one's actually mentioned this so far, is the design of the zombies and the fact they have red eyes as well, signifying like it's an endless loop of hell, more or less. Giving off more of the prison vibe is amazing, as well as the new perk introduced, Electric Cherry is great. True, I forgot about Electric Cherry. Like, I know it's a little bit meh, but in certain niche situations, it can really save your life. You know, it was like Widow's Wine before Widow's Wine. Stunning all the zombies around you, allowing you to like catch a breath and sometimes survive ridiculous situations. Sub says either Kino, Firebase Z or Derizendrak. They're some of my favorite maps from any game and are just really iconic. Not as much for Firebase. Uh, understandable. Kino and Derizen are definitely iconic, but Firebase, eh, you know, I'd say it's probably the weakest map on Cold War, but it's definitely still fun. Like it's not a bad map. None of the Cold War's maps are bad. I just think they lack a little bit of personality, but the Easter egg was kind of neat outside of like the, what was it, the mimic step kind of bugging sometimes. I've never personally had an issue with it every time I've done it, but I know a lot of people do have issues with it, so I can't really ignore it. But yeah, I understand the opinion. Jack Layton says probably Kino or Transit. Wow, Transit. Okay, that's the first Transit comment, I think. They both bring the memories of when I started playing Zombies with the launch of BO1 and then the game that really got me hooked on it, BO2. Yeah, I can understand that because Kino being like the first map on BO1, it's a lot of the zombies communities, like maps that they really remember. One of the first maps they played probably. And then by the time Transit comes out, you know, the trailer and the climax of the moon Easter egg leading into Transit, like regardless of what you say about Transit as a map, aesthetically, it's really damn cool. A whole burned down like Earth, really. And just seeing a more in touch, like of the Walking Dead style of we're just normal survivors on a hellish landscape that's just been destroyed and we have to try and stick together and kill the zombies, you know? AIDS Co-op says, uh, Derizon has the most memories attached to it for me and the bows are awesome, but the wave gun is my favorite wonder weapon, so it's somewhere between Moon and Derizon for me. Shadows is definitely up there as well because the setting is so cool. I absolutely love it. Yeah, honestly, like Moon and Derizon, they're very, very similar maps. You know, the Easter eggs kind of contrast one another, which is why I love Horizon so much because Moon's a little bit weak for me. I think Zombies Chronicles absolutely fixed everything about Moon, and I would say Moon is the best Zombies Chronicles map, but on Black Ops 1, I wasn't a huge fan of it. You know, obviously it's in space, it's fucking awesome, like, as a concept, but the way it plays, you know, EO3 definitely did it more justice. But Shadows of Evil as well, definitely up there. The setting of Shadows and just, like, the similarities to Mob of the Dead, are obviously, like, as a first map for Black Ops 3, I think it put off a lot of people because they tried it and were like, oh my god, what? There's like Magwas, tentacles, and such complex, ridiculous Easter egg things that you have to do to get basic stuff done. Which is why I think the Giant should have just been free instead of like having to buy the season pass because it would have given other players an option to just go back and do that kind of retrospective old style gameplay. But still, Shadows Age, like fine wine, one of the best maps of all time. Chris W, a regular commenter. Hey, what's up, man? Kino for me. Basic map, I know, but many hours spent on it. Always reminds me of the good old days, yeah. Any map that gives you those good old memories of when you first started playing zombies or you were first getting good at it, or, you know, when you were just younger, so it naturally yeah, everything was better when you're younger. Very true, very true. Bub Bubbington, Kino again. I think it was the first zombies map I played, A, like I was mentioning earlier, and probably five, both were enjoyable. Yeah, I think Kino and five were also two of the first maps I probably played. The first zombies game that I owned, was Black Ops 2, and this was by the time that, like, Buried was out. I think the Origins trailer had just been released. But the first time I ever played Zombies was either Transit or it was Kino slash 5, and I literally couldn't get past round 4. I was... <laughs> I was like terrified when I first played. I was playing it at a friend's house, I remember it distinctively. And then I watched uh, a YouTuber called Captain Sparkles who used to do like zombies gameplays on BO2. He's most known for his Minecraft videos, but like back then he occasionally did like the old COD zombie stuff because he used to be on Machinima, I believe. And he did a lot of COD stuff back then. It was pretty cool to see. And yeah, that got me hooked into zombies. I was already interested, like hooked me immediately. NJ on crack, okay. 
Uh, Buried, I played that map the most and always had fun on it. I played it to the point where me and my brother playing split screen had our own strat. It was very unique and they simply don't make maps that good anymore. I suppose I can kind of agree. I mean, I have faith for the future, but with Activision's decision making recently. I mean, yeah, I don't think we're going to get another Buried, but the map was very, very fun. Buried had so much content, like it really did. There was so much detail in that map. The Paralyzer is just a better jet gun. The time bombs were really unique. The witches were actually terrifying. And yeah, I think Buried, I know it's one of the easiest maps, but if you don't use the bank and you don't necessarily know all of the ins and outs of like the bonus ways that you can get three points and stuff, then it could definitely be challenging to newer players, but eventually you just get a stride with it and you can just keep on playing. It's just very replayable. Post 4128, very simple, just says Green Run. I like referring to Transit as Green Run because Green Run includes the survival maps. And in that regard, I can agree because yeah, the survival maps are the best part of transit. Hakima Jabbar, I think I pronounced that correctly, uh, has to be Doris for its simplicity, plus it's introduced the Packer Punch and the first Easter Egg, or Origins for being the first map that you could do the Easter Egg on solo, and the first map to have elemental weapons, and it gives a challenge. Now, I like the latter half of this because, yeah, Origins was the first map you could do an Easter Egg on solo. Like, Mob of the Dead, I think you can do all the way up to the last step, but you can't beat it. You need to have a second player, which is a bit annoying. But Origins, you could just do the whole thing on solo, which is awesome. I know Call of the Dead you can technically do on solo as well, but it's a different Easter egg, like it's an easier version and there's less steps. So I don't know if I'd necessarily count it. But yeah, also the first map to have elemental weapons and having the animated Pack-a-Punch camo and stuff was really, really cool. I know Mob also introduced the animated camo for the first time, but the blue icy camo just looks so fucking cool. Deathfinger says Transit because Ted. Agreed. Bakura19 says Origins, the way the map is, and most importantly, the Wonder Weapon. Or what should I say, Wonder Weapons? Yeah, Origins is an all-around masterpiece, really, isn't it? Campbell VDL says Origins and DE, just amazing. Agreed. Thank you for actually saying both and, like, appreciating both maps and not being like, oh, you can only like Origins or DE. Like, some people really don't like you having a favorite over the other. Like, why can't I just like both, you know? So, total respect to you, man. T3XT7 says my favorite is probably Doris or the Giant. It was one of the most most revolutionary maps in zombies. Dorit introduced the Packer Punch, and plus the map is very fun and replayable. True, I mean, the Packer Punch system, you know, it's been in every single map since, and you can't forget that. Dorit didn't really start it all in terms of innovation. I'm gonna have to go with Kino, was the first map I ever played, so I guess I have nostalgia speaking there. A close second would be Dorizen Jurok. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm gonna go rapid fire through the last few because otherwise this video is gonna go on for too long. DX Max says, Very just scenery and the mechanics just came all together for me to make it, in my opinion, a masterpiece. If I were to choose any others, it would probably be Origins, but that's a whole different kind of worms that I'm not gonna get into. True. Yeah, like going from Buried to Origins, I mean, going from Mob to Buried to Origins, honestly, like three absolute masterpieces back to back to back. Buried definitely was a bit more new player friendly, like over time but yeah origins is also just amazing but there's a lot more content there meaning it is a bit more difficult so it did kind of alienate a few people in the zombies community like until they at least got good enough to play it kevin man 1418 says origins just because of the memories i miss playing with my friends trying to get to 255 wow i don't think i ever got 255 on any of the older games but I mean, it was definitely possible, but Jesus, man, it would take like, <laughs> I don't know, four straight days or something playing Origins without any sleep or whatever it is. I plan on doing some more high rounds in the future, but yeah, maybe not 255. My highest of all time is 216, I think, on D-Machine. And like, high rounds on Cold War are ironically really fun compared to some of the previous games because like, anything is really viable and not just because of alternate ammo types either, which I like. Robloxian says, honestly, Darius kicks ass out of all the maps in Cold Zombies, talking about the World of War version 2 map pretty much explains everything on how this happened. Map is also possibly my the most unforgiving map in COD Zombies history. I can agree with that in terms of like the ray gun glitch and stuff, the fact Quick Revive doesn't work on solo, the Wonder Waff like a glitch and stuff. The song in this map is pretty much the coolest song, sorry 115 fans. I mean, I like 115 and Beauty of Annihilation, but original Beauty of Annihilation is like a masterpiece. And how the teleporters work is really cool. The downside is the Waff, that's all I gotta say. Damn, I don't like the Waff. I mean, I think the Waff is aesthetically looks really cool. The animations are pretty sick, but I suppose there are better wonder weapons. I think it was way cooler back in original Darice, but in the giant, you know, Deadwire is just a better version of the WAF. Like any gun can be a WAF basically and even better. 
Mr. Stockman says, I honestly had the best time playing the Nuketown Zombies. Another Nuketown Enjoyer. Let's go. Really wish they'd release another version that didn't require a PS3. True. I want more maps kind of like Nuketown Zombies. You know, small survival experiences on top of like, you know, the fleshed out, really cool Shadows of Evil style of maps. But there needs to be just something simple for other players to be able to get used to the gameplay systems of that game. You know? Def NT says, Voyage of Despair. Fun as hell. And crazy Easter egg steps with friends. Will be hilarious and by yourself is just less fun. Always love the lore. BO4 underrated. I can agree with BO4 being underrated. I love some of the maps on there. And I played Voyage quite a bit actually earlier this year because I wanted to like give it a chance, you know? And it's definitely not as bad as I thought. The whole like corridor thing just get very um, disorienting. But it has a very, very fun, cool Easter egg from what I've seen. The Wonder Weapon's pretty sick, especially the upgrades as well. I like how you can just basically upgrade to different elements and stuff and it works with the zombies. Yeah, definitely not as bad as I originally thought it was. Glitch Trap plays says Origins. Okay, I <laughs> straight to the point. I like it. Oh Shadow says Akino de Toten. Some may grow under the mention, but it's my first ever map. Had a good song E, isn't overly complicated and is genuinely well designed and a great time in general. I was happy to have it as my introduction and not a map like Shadows of Evil. True. No offense to fans of the BO3 plus maps, I just prefer the classics and think that games past BO2 got overly complex for them. I can totally agree with this because, sure, I love BO3. I love the complex stuff as long as it's not like too complex, but the, someone like Oh Shadow just wants to play zombies at its core. So they would clearly appreciate the survival type maps, you know. Every game, no matter what, every zombies game needs to have a good split between the difficulty so it can like appeal to every single type of player that's the problem because yeah kino i mean sure i don't find it super fun anymore it's kind of like outdated a little bit but if you want to just play zombies it is one of the perfect maps to do that it has everything you know it has perks pack a punch a good place to train not too difficult for high rounds hitoro says de obviously but dead of the night is one of my favorites thank you for saying this i love dead of the night really enjoyed going for high rounds on that map i mean i love vampires werewolves all of that aesthetic great vibe great wonder weapon great map flow music characters and personally i like the bo4 perk system more and i like the specialist weapons interesting i know that's going to be a bit controversial because the bo4 perk system in my opinion was a bit of an l but like it was certainly unique. It's just the fact that they said they wanted to get away from crutch perks and then they made more crutch perks like as a result of the system. Like, come on. Like at that point, you might as well just keep double tap in and keep jogging, you know? But the specialist weapons were very cool. I just, I don't think it was fair to allow you to spawn in with them. I think they should have made it so you have to like, I don't know, do a quest of some kind to earn whatever your specialist weapon is. But then again, if we had that, you know, BO4 was already quite overly complicated with quests and content. So maybe it was the right choice in hindsight. I wish upon a fish. Great name. You know, the totem easily because I have a smooth brain and pressing any more than five buttons makes my head hurt. Understandable, yeah, this is just like what we were saying about more simple maps. Pigmasters32, The Reese of the Giant is a map that I could play every day for the rest of my life, the ultimate replayable zombies map. It kind of is, you know? I don't think I could ever get bored of the giant, even after all these years. Like, it's still, it's just, it's gonna live on forever, you know? Void R6 says transit. At the time, the idea of a huge map, and I mean huge, was a cool thing, and the fact it has such a weak wonder weapon means that you need to know how to use it to the best it can be. If only it was on the newer gen, it would have been amazing amazing but i think it's still good yeah i mean i can kind of agree with you here i don't like the fact that the wonder weapon is so weak i know in theory you can get to like really high rounds with it if you know how to use it but at the same time it's just very annoying to use in general like the fact it slows you down you have to like basically stand in a full horde of zombies and then you're probably gonna die while you're using it and the fact that if it breaks and the bits land in the lava, they return to their previous spots, I think, or they're just completely gone forever. Like, ugh, that's just a completely obnoxious, like, mechanic. But yeah, I think Transit definitely deserves more love. I can agree with you there. The idea of a really big map, I think, is really cool as well. You know, like having a transport system like the bus. Whether you like Transit or not, the whole bus going around the map, it adds to a whole different dynamic of the game. Creepy aesthetic. The fog, even though it, like, was a bit too much, it definitely made it so you were, like, you were hesitant to go out and run instead of being on the bus. Like, it made the bus kind of almost essential. 
Spriggenborn says Call of the Dead. Hey, first Call of the Dead one. Okay. It's got several places that are fun to train and introduced PhD and the Scavenger is one of the best feeling wonder weapons to use. Now, I think you're slightly wrong with the facts here in terms of introducing PhD because actually Ascension introduced PhD, but totally agree the Scavenger is like a really, really cool wonder weapon. I know it's a little bit underwhelming when you get to like round 30, 40 onwards, but Call of the Dead, I mean, George Romero, rest in peace, of course. The crew, like you got Merle Dixon, I mean, fucking Danny Trejo, like you can't get much cooler than Call of the Dead. And I wish I played it back in the day. I haven't played Call of the Dead until, you know, the first time I played it was Call of the Dead Remastered. And then I went back and played on Plutonium, the original Call of the Dead. And it was so much fun. I just wish I gave it a bit more love back in the day. But I don't think I owned the DLC on Black Ops 1, like on my, on my Xbox or anything. So that's probably why. Because, you know, it's still full price. Thank you, Activision. Lacey Alexander says Shadows of Evil for its simple and understandable map layout, as well as its amazing 1950s style atmosphere, which I have always had a soft spot for, with the mixture of Lovecraftian monsters and futuristic weapons, which mesh so well with each other for some odd reason. Yeah, I mean, it does seem to really go well together, all things considered, like the whole Lovecraftian vibe. It, it fits in with the 1950s. I don't know. I don't know why either, but I think it was more 1920s, but I I could be completely wrong there. Don't quote me. Yeah, the map layout was quite nice. I agree with you there because it was sort of going back to that whole like Doris map layout where you have a core center and then everywhere sort of branches off because to get to the packet punch, you know, you've got to go into the center of the map. But once you've opened it up to upstairs, you know, you come out by stamina up in the center bit anyway, and it all just flows very nicely. So you can't really get lost on shadows too much. Basil says Kino de Toten, for obvious reasons, it introduced the Thunder Gun. It was on BO1 and BO3, and overall it's a great map. Runner up is kind of controversial, but Town, thank you. I literally have no reasoning, I just like Town. Me too, I love Town. Town is the single best survival map experience. The single best, like, easy map, small map. It's just great. But yeah, Kino, you know, we've gone through the reasons, but yeah. Kino's iconic. L, oh my god, Death Note. Buried, it's cool being able to fly around the map with the Paralyzer and interacting with Leroy, then you're able to get a free perk from the Ghost. True, I like maps that actually allow you to go above the perk limit, but while still keeping the perk limit. I think that's a good way of having the perk limit in. Otherwise, I just think the perk limit should be gone entirely and just allow you to buy perks no matter what. But yeah, I do love Buried. The whole being able to fly around is kind of sick. You've never been able to fly in zombies really before then, other than, I guess, Moon, if you're counting the uh, the jump pad things. Domingo Gonzalez, favorite map is Derizendrak, but uh, what the fuck? I did it. Pronunciation? Derizendrak, because of the Easter egg and the bows. Can't deny that. Giga Joey, my favorite is Town, another town enjoyer. My friend, let's go. I'd play with my little brother every day for hours after school and we'd always try to get round 30. We always went for the Iron Sights DSR and a packed ray gun. I remember that. You could take the, uh, the, the sight off of the DSR and other snipers and stuff, which is quite cool. Or I know for a fact you could do it on the DSR. I don't know about like the ballista or anything. Or the ballista. What's, what was the, what was the, uh, there was another sniper. I'm totally forgetting the name. Full auto one. Or like, not full auto. Semi auto. Oh my God, my brain. Just, yeah, been recording for like an hour straight now. So <laughs> Nick Jeffrey says, I've probably spent more time on the giant than any other map over all the games that Catwalk has been an endless supply of fun without fail. Apart from that biased opinion, my favorite would have to be Revelations as it kind of brought an end to the story I followed for like eight years. I still remember completing World of War on Xbox 360, then seeing zombies pop up at the bottom. I was like, what the hell? Never seen that before. Yeah, I know. The whole like zombies just popping in at the end of the campaign was kind of awesome. Instantly hooked. I remember everything about that moment from the clothes I was wearing to the layout of my bedroom. Damn, you really remembered exactly. Like, yeah, it's such iconic moments. Like, they just, they stay with you forever. Like, I'm never going to forget the fact that I played, like, Transit 5 or Kino or whatever at, the, at my friend's house, like, over a decade ago. Because that all got me started, you know? And that's how I'm doing YouTube right now. So, only a few more comments. I will do a couple of the shorter ones now. Mine's Dairise, JK, it's Kino. <laughs> Respect. Okay. Thank you, Bobby Snowden. Okay, says Mob Origins Kino all for their own reasons. Yeah, all three are just absolutely iconic. Bird the third. <laughs> nice. Bird the third. I like that. Transit because my friends hate me. Hey, we've all got our own reasons, man. Zev says Kino was my first and have a lot of memories on it. Also, remember enjoying Moon a lot. Yeah, both maps, you know. Everything on Black Ops 1 just it has its own identity. It was very authentic. Professional idiot who owes Wolfie 10 pounds. I don't know who Wolfie is, but hey, go get your money, man. Gorod, only bad thing is the Wonder Weapon passed round 60. Agreed. I think it's passed round 50, but yeah, the Mark 3 not being able to one-shot to like round 100, kind of a bit of an L. And it made Garod high rounds pretty difficult, but 
I don't know, it made them a little bit tedious at the same time, you know, we all remember fucking Mr. T. Lexify and the uh, I Quit video, oh boy. Shadows of Evil is my favorite. The map is very different from any other map, has one of the best wonder weapons and getting the sword and upgrading it is one of the most rewarding things in zombies in my opinion. Honestly, yeah, I can agree with you, J.A. Jensen. Shadows is just aesthetically iconic as fuck. And the swords, like I didn't really speak about the swords, like the Apothecary Servant, of course, you know, it shoots fucking black holes, even the non-upgraded version, like this is the non-revelations version, like it's still broken. Especially with alchemical antithesis, which was introduced in Black Ops 3, the gobble gum, which just gives you like unlimited ammo, basically. But the swords upgrading, like it, the way that all of that flows into the map itself and how we, the gameplay works, it's really cool. Because, you know, it's just like a bunch of soul boxes and then you spawn in Marguas and then you kill them and then you upgrade and then like, boom, and then you have the upgraded sword. And to actually initially start it all, you have to go on the train system or whatever, the tram. So it's making you use all the uh, different systems of the map, which I like. I like when Easter egg steps actually flow into the gameplay, you know? Not just, oh, go and shoot random rocks outside the map. Ahem, <laughs> revelations. Jose Medina says, Spaceland, the theme of the map really does it for me. It has a lot of personality with all the references, songs, David Hasselhoff, of course, and etc. Yeah, zombies in Spaceland, like, th I love the 80s, 80s music, so immediately the aesthetic hit me. I love how much stuff there is to do, yet the map is tight and not too big once you know the layout. Yeah, it's really not, like, that huge of a map. It's probably, like, about as big as Doris, maybe? Maybe slightly bigger? The traps, guns, enemies, games, easter eggs, quests, and final boss are all fun and creative. True. I like that there was the ghosts and skulls thing, which is basically just like a second main easter egg, more or less, which was nice. Like, the devs clearly just wanted you to have fun when playing, which I love. I think it's so awesome how you can have all four zap gun wonder weapons equipped with mule munchies and a very, very easy to do pack-a-punch glitch, which is probably overkill, yeah. Still cool, because I can't think of another map where you can have so many wonder weapons at once. Yeah, I mean... You can do the origin staff glitch, which I showed in the video, where you can basically have up to three staffs at once. But yeah, it did, it did just like let you have multiple laser guns at the same time, which is really cool. Anthony Wurtz. Wurtz? I, I'm, I'm so bad with names, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mob of the Dead, because a few reasons. The Blunder Gap. Amazing wonder weapon. The fact you can either turn it into the acid gap or the sweeper. Very, very cool. How the easter egg shift that changed everything in the time loop. I'm guessing they mean like the cycles. I, I agree with that. The whole cycle mechanic was really, really cool. The area is tight, therefore harder to survive in. Yeah, like there was no real easy peasy place to train in Mold of the Dead. Even like the cafeteria has some spots where you can easily just get stuck and downed like there. The tomahawk is cool. Agreed. I don't think it's the best like wonder weapon ever only kills six at a time obviously but it is a very cool looking weapon and the zombies look sick agreed but back to that like barbed wire zombie prison look with the red eyes of course and the final comment from brandon oh my god we got a long one too i've never heard of this channel but this was randomly on my home page so here's my answer mob of the dead another mob one of course from its story to its gameplay mob is damn near perfection couldn't agree more Map, it's awesome, looking well, being easy enough to traverse and really fits the theme of hell perfectly. The story, it's a simple yet perfectly executed story of betrayal, and I love the fact that there's two endings, not to mention the star-studded cast of mob movie actors that play some of the most fun characters in the series. The Wonder Weapon may be a bit overpowered, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't so much fun to use and an easy way to get high rounds if you're looking to waste time. The new perk, while not being even close to the levels of the original perks, Electric Cherry pairs great with the Acid Gat, and is a great perk for your loadout, especially since there's no Quick Revive, and is by far the best perk BO2 had to offer. You know, I can agree with that, because Quick Revive has always been essential in every single map, until Mob, where it just didn't need to exist, because, you know, the Afterlife system it allows you to have a fourth perk. But then again, there is like only four perk options. I mean, who's gonna fucking buy Deadshot, you know? Especially on PC. The Easter egg may be one of the easier ones and it is repetitive, but it's integrated into the map very well and is a lot of fun with friends if you're not wanting to do one of the more in-depth Easter eggs. And the Easter egg song, I mean, it's Johnny Cash. Do I need to say more? Yeah, you right. Johnny Cash, absolute legend. But very true, the, the thing they said about integration into the map, like every Easter egg should flow with the map simultaneously. So thank you very much, Brandon, and thank you everyone for all the comments. Like, oh my god, we went through 71 fucking comments in this video. Holy shit, my throat is absolutely dead now. But I wanted to get through every single one, you know, I didn't want to miss anyone's comment, but in the future I may only read like 30 or so, so these videos aren't as long, because this one's probably going to be quite a while. So the next ZomCon episode 
will probably be going up in about a week or so, maybe two weeks, because obviously I want to have time to like get the comments out so that we can have more people like answering and stuff. But look out for a community post. I'll probably link it in the comment section down below, as well as it'll just be on my YouTube community page. But thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out this video on screen. YouTube says you might like it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.